Hey guys, it's Mark here again from Mature Technology. Today I'm going to explain some of the features of the Chimp Rewriter Editor. You'll notice that whenever we first fire Chimp Rewriter up, it always starts in the latest news tab. So this gives you the latest news, updates and features that have been introduced into Chimp Rewriter. We call this a tab because the tab is displayed here. You'll also notice that it always opens a blank tab called New Document. So if we click on New Document, you'll see that the menu items change and other key features change as well. So let me explain the menus. So we have here what's called a ribbon menu. Now this menu contains features that are categorized into different menu items. Here I'm showing you the edit menu. If I click here you see the rewrite menu, tools menu, help menu. You'll also notice that a number of the buttons are grey. This means that they're not active at this time. So in this instance, these buttons are not active because there's no text. So if I type here, this is text. We'll notice there that they've become active. To get help on what these buttons do, simply hover the cursor and leave it there for a second. Chimp will then display some text explaining what that feature does. So if we hover over there, we get more, and so on. This feature is available anywhere within Chimp Rewriter, making it very easy to see what each button and feature does. Within the editor, so we're in the new document editor here, you'll see that the screen is divided up into the editor pane. So this is where we type text and add substance to our documents. We have here the spin editor pane. So as we can see right now, we've got the variation builder selected. We can choose rapid rewrite, spin editor, or system log. So simply by clicking on these tabs down the bottom, we get the different editors. So here we have the word and phrase density pane. Over here we have the synonym selector and then by clicking on here we get the project center. Notice that the project center is not displayed by default. We can display it by hovering over it and then we can lock it in place by clicking this pin here. So this pins it into place so it won't auto hide anymore. We can unpin it to auto hide it. Now notice that we can do that with any of these paints. So unpin that, unpin that, select again, click the pin, locked in place. Select, click the pen, locked in pace. Now a few other little features of the Chimp Rewriter Editor. Here we have what's called a toolbar. So this contains uh, special features or functions that are available to that item. So in this case the synonym selector. So again, hover over there to get help. Replace all, replace, change force to lowercase and so on. With any pane we can actually resize those panes. So by hovering here you'll see the cursor changes. I can now hold the left mouse button in and with it held in I can move my cursor. So notice I can resize the panes to different sizes. So I can do that here as well. Now you'll also see within the panes a grab handle. So again I can do the same. So that changes the, uh, the size within the pane. So if I was to do that I, I would have more room to add new synonyms and so on. The editor also has a title bar, so that's here. So this is the name of the, of the program, the version, and whichever document we currently have open. The star at the end indicates that there's changes have been made and haven't been saved to the document. Here we have what's called a quick access bar, so this has some features that enable you to quickly access commonly used items. In this case, undo, redo, save, load, and new document. Now some of the items have a drop down, so here, if I click there, I have access to save, save all, open and merge files. So that'll allow you to open multiple files and merge them. The status bar contains information about your document. So here it says we're in paragraph 2, cursor position 10. We have four words, two sentences, and two paragraphs within our document. Uh, the amount of spin, uh, which language we're currently editing in, which, which thesaurus we have selected, uh, the project that we have selected, and so on. Okay, now that we've got some of the very basics down pat, what we'll do is show you how to load a file. So the first thing we can do is we can go File, and here we have all the recent files that we've had open, or we can just say Open here. Now we get an open dialog. So this remembers the last directory that I loaded something from. Now this is very important. Down here we have text files selected. I can drop this down, I can choose any number of files, Word 97 doc files, 2007, Office files, HTML files, and so on. In this case, I'm going to keep text files selected. Next thing you do is click the file that you want to load and click Open. 
So it'll actually open the file in the temporary writer editor. So this is the text file that I just loaded. Newly opened files will default to the edit tab. Within the edit menu I can apply certain editing features such as bolding, underlining, creating lists, indenting and so on. I can also set heading text, heading 1, heading 3. To change them I can select normal again. I can undo any action that I've done and I can redo actions as well. I can find, replace, select entire paragraphs, words, documents and so on. I can check the document for gra grammatical errors and I can also check for spelling mistakes. Notice here that some of the words are underlined with a red squiggly line. This indicates that that is a word that the spell checker does not recognize. Okay, so as you can see that this editor works very similar to Microsoft Word Editor and it allows you to write your own articles uh, very quickly and format those articles. All formatting will be converted to HTML when the document is exported to a website. The final thing I'm going to show you is how to style Chimpery Writer to match your own personality. So we'll see the style button here, click it, and we'll see a list of styles here. So simply click them to change the look and feel of Chimpery Writer. So blue, dark blue, silver, metro, and back to black. We can also change the colours to be very unique. So if we choose silver again, colour scheme, red, there's our own unique style. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you again later. Bye.